It's good to be back in Zion National Park. I just got in this afternoon. I left Salt Lake early this morning and stormed pretty much the whole way in. Lots of wind and rain on the way. And that is the forecast for today. Might even be able to hear it in the audio on the camera here. Uh, the wind's howling in between the buttes here and stuff. We're here on the east side and I've got a lot of clouds packing in, getting socked in pretty quick. So I have no plans to take a photo this afternoon, especially not with a view camera. Figured on the way in with all the wind and stuff that's coming down here, wasn't gonna happen. And it's a little ambitious to think that I can just show up and immediately start firing the shutter too. Of course, need time to scout and find some photographs. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've had about the last hour and a half or so to kind of scout around and see, check out the status of the washes and see, see what I'm working with, kind of where I should start for the week. I think later tonight, we're supposed to get some rain. I don't think we're gonna get the kind of rain we got last year that ended up turning the washes into a river, which was beautiful, by the way. If you haven't seen that, linked up here in the description. But depending on how much rain we get, there could be some good opportunities. I'm just hoping that the wind doesn't blow so bad that it starts stripping the trees. I don't think it's gonna be too much of a problem because a lot of these trees are in transition still. You can see behind me, there's a lot of green. I think I've actually timed this just about right. So the beginning of the week, you start in higher elevations and the color starts to kind of work its way down from higher to lower elevation. From the looks of it, I'm here right when things are starting to transition. So pretty happy with my timing on this trip. My plan is to be here for a full week again. We'll see how many episodes I get, but uh, I'm hoping it'll be a really productive week and I'm gonna keep walking these washes and see if I can get a game plan for tomorrow morning. And then I might go shoot some B-roll up over the canyon view to get some look at the clouds that are rolling in. That might be kind of fun. So. Most likely I'll catch you in the morning, which will be in just a couple seconds. I had seen what was coming at us on the drive in. So a sleepless night in the tent with blowing around in the wind was no surprise. But in landscape photography, the dramatic weather often presents us with the best opportunities. And frequently, some truly beautiful conditions as the storm clears. The forecast was a little off. We ended up getting quite a bit more than was originally led to believe we were going to. So after I left off last night, it rained all night long. From the time the sun went down until, you know, just before, just before I was getting ready to get up. It was about four or five in the morning and they get stopped finally blowing the tent around. But that's great because that means uh, with all the water we got, the washes are flowing again. So I've run out here to come get some video and check things out and see what everything looks like. It's beautiful, it's just absolutely beautiful. What a wonderful way to start a trip. It, it's really is, it's, it's fantastic seeing this. Now, of course, this whole canyon was cut, you know, from moving water like this, but it's just, as many times as I've been to Zion, this is only the second time I've ever seen water flowing down here in the washes. So it's a really nice street. Some of the higher peaks in the park, got some snow last night. So the evergreen trees are dusted with the snow highlight, which looks absolutely beautiful. No accumulation in the, on the lower elevations in the park at all, but it is it is pretty chilly. So my goal for this morning right away, uh, I got a couple things in mind I want to check on. I'm gonna try to go see if I can get a photo here right away. Because last year that was the one thing that I was kind of bummed about. Is that, I mean, I was so frantically running around, I just I did, hardly knew what to even do with all of it. Uh, and I never managed to get a photograph of it while the wash was still flowing. So I'm gonna see if I can do that this morning. Yeah, here's the hoping for a productive morning.
As I was scouting yesterday afternoon, I came across the scene that I'm set up on now. It's something that I knew that if we got any amount of rainfall enough to, you know, fill the washes that this would flow. So, of course, this morning I'd be lined out here to come check it, and sure enough, it's it's flowing water and it's some fall and stuff. It looks really good. So I set up on it with my 90 millimeter Nikon SW lens. I'm shooting a vertical composition. I've just framed this whole sandstone kind of feature where the water's cut into it in the center of the composition. And then the background is just this embankment that's got a little bit of fall color on it, and not a lot. This tree on the left, which looks like a box elder tree, there's one on the left and the right that's kind of framing in the top of the composition up here. They're both in transition, so there's there, there's a lot of green in it, but it's starting to transition to yellow. And that's okay. I don't I don't care that this doesn't have perfect fall color in it. Because to me, the more unique, you know, what makes this composition special is is the flowing water coming through the foreground here. I've elected not to include the sky, so I've cut that off, which leaves the background a little cropped off. Uh, and that's okay. Again, like I said, I was more focused on the foreground. In addition to that, this main pool in the foreground here, right before it drops down in the main wash, is reflecting some of the sky, so I decided to polarize that out a little bit. Unfortunately, I left my filter holder in the truck, so I had to hold it up there. <laughs> it's kind of a pain, but uh, it worked. So I'm shooting Provia 100F on this one. Uh, I thought about doing a Velvia shot, but it's too much wind. So the trees kept blowing around with all the breeze coming through here because there's still a little bit of storm clouds kind of coming through that are creating some wind. But with the reciprocity characteristics of Velvia, it would have extended my shutter time too long to be able to time it in between that. So I just stuck with Provia 100F. Uh, it had to account for the polarizer on the front. The best I could measure through the polarizer at the foreground, uh, it was knocking about a stop and a third down. So I added that to my exposure time, which put me at two seconds at F32. Other than that, it's just been kind of about trying not to freeze your fingers off because, yeah, this wind that's coming through is really cold. You know, I actually was spitting a little bit of snow down on me while I was setting this composition up. Nice, cool reminder that winter is just around the corner. But I think that's it for now. Just two exposures on this one, one for backup, especially since I'm doing all this hand-holding kind of funny stuff. I want to make sure just in case I bump the camera, I don't you know, have a backup shot. And uh, I think it's time to break down the camera. Head up on down to wash. I got another thing I want to check out here before it gets, you know, too bright in midday. So, on we go. For the most part, both exposures turned out okay, although they both exhibit a little bit of a light leak problem, as you might have noticed here on the borders. The image on the left was less affected, but the one on the right looks like it suffered a little bit of fogging on the top right of the exposure. That doesn't seem to be present on the left exposure. The side that seems to be having the issue here is the end that the dark slide comes out of. There's a seal in there that's probably going bad. The trouble is, it hasn't been easy to try to narrow down which holder and which side it is that's giving me the issues. So on this trip, I made it a point to make sure that I took good fill notes, and I definitely know which holder this was. Of the two exposures, the one on the left has a little bit better polarization of this mid-ground pool that's reflecting the sky. And fortunately, that's the one that has the least amount of issues as well. So naturally, that's the one that I chose to edit. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the bubbles in this foreground pool had formed a swirl pattern as they were rotating during the exposure. I hadn't noticed they were doing that in the field, but I think I really like it. Both exposures had just a little bit of motion blur here where the wind was blowing the leaves around, but it isn't too bad and I think it's totally acceptable. And lastly, there is just a little bit of blue sky peeking in on the top right corner up here. I'm not a real fan of that, so I'll end up either cropping it or patching that in in post. But here's my edit, and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below. And if you want to make sure you don't miss the rest of the videos from my trip in Zion this year, consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next video.